Good morning, church. Welcome to worship this morning. We do have a couple of announcements for you. First off, Wednesday is Flag Day, so remember to, to wave your flags and put them out on display. Wednesday, the 14th at 2 o'clock is our chair volleyball practice start, whatever Jim's going to have us do. And then Thursday, the 15th, Young at Heart at 11 o'clock. And pantry items this week are bar soap and something else. I forgot my little list here. Doesn't bar soap and body wash this week. I do want to remind everyone, if you have not done so, please complete one of our blue information cards so we can get accurate information and update our files. And you should have received in your bulletin your little prayer card. If you could fill those out with your praise and concerns and just drop them in the offering plate when it goes by, that would be wonderful. What? Oh. <laughs> she wants to... I'll take care. Oh, I'm on. No. no. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, sit down apart from each other. Now, I haven't, I haven't gotten any lessons from Jim, but basically we're going to sit in chairs. There's going to be a neck. You don't mess with a pastor, right? All right. Okay, so we hope to see you all on Wednesday. All right, I have one more announcement. Brian is doing some work over at the farmhouse, and I think Saturday he's going to be working on the soffit and trim on the front porch. So if anyone is able and willing to help him with that, please check in with him. He'll let you know what time and everything. But they painted the pillars this week, but they need to work on some of the trim and stuff up there. Any other announcements I missed? All right, the Young at Heart Thursday is going over to the Salty Dog Museum in Shandon, and you have to be there by 11 o'clock. So if you're planning on carpooling or wanting any information, check with Tom to make sure you get there by 11. And that's the Salty Dog Antique and Fire Truck Museum. All right, anything else? Then stand, if you could, and join me in our call to worship this morning. As we assemble here from the east and the west, the north and the south, let us recall with gratitude the many blessings of God. So give thanks to God, who is always good, always steadfast, love, endures forever. Let all the redeemed sing their praise together, for God has turned desert experiences into pools of water and made parched souls become like springs of living water. Oh, give thanks to God, who is always good, whose love is Christ and endures forever. And remain standing for our opening praise song, God of grace, God of glory.
may be seated. We want to welcome those who are watching online this morning. And as I have said numerous times, we're not a fancy church, but we're family. And so during this time uh, of our service, we want to recognize those who are having birthdays this week or anniversaries. I know we have a few, so if you have a birthday this week, would you please come up to be recognized or an anniversary? All right, so we have Jennifer's birthday is on Flag Day. And I just found out when I saw the date here on June the 14th, that's my son's birthday. So I will always remember your birthday. All right, Tom, your birthday is on yesterday. Or yesterday, oh. the 10th. And happy birthday. Thank you. We got excited. We got excited. And we have an anniversary. On his birthday. On his birthday. Yeah. So it was yesterday. And how many years? 51. 51. Everybody All right. Join hands, folks. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for for this church family. I give you thanks especially for each and every one here, for Jennifer, for Tom, for Dan, and for Sharon, for all the many ways in which they have worked and have blessed this congregation. Thank you, God. Now I ask that you will pour a special blessing upon them as they... uh, celebrate uh, birthdays together. I pray that you will grant them many more years of good health and happiness. And I ask that you will bless Sharon and Dan and their marriage. I pray, Lord, uh, that you will just give them a boatload of happiness and good health and patience with one another. We, give the, we ask this in your holy and precious name and give you the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if I have any children, would they uh, like to come up, please? I have something for you. Come on up. Come on up. It's good to see you this morning. I have been away. I have been on vacation. And as I was thinking about what to preach on this morning, it's going to be how great is our God. I have a question I'm going to ask you. Do you like to go outside and play? Yes. 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 Have you ever gone on any hikes? No. Have you? No. Yes. You, you, I, have, I have yesterday. I went, on a bus. I went on a trail. You went on a trail. Okay. And have, have you gone fishing? Do you like to go fishing? I hate fishing. Okay. I, I, the other the other week was in Florida and it's awesome. Can do it. Yeah, but it's yeah. Like cool. All right. So you can go. I, I never been fishing before though. You never been fishing. Never been fishing. All right. Well, I think maybe uh, we can get some guys here in the church that might be willing to take you fishing, or if they have a pond to invite you over. Would you like that? Yeah. All right. So anyway, I want to talk to you about God's creation. And I hope that this summer, instead of (laughs) watching TV or being on your cell phones, that you'll go outside and you'll be able to look at all the wonderful things God created, okay? So with that in mind, I want to give you this. It's just some animals of the sea, but if you put them in water, they'll grow, they'll get big. And here's some stickers of various animals, and some of these animals I saw in Africa. So I want you to remember, like a giraffe, that's right. So I want you to remember who created the world. Jesus. God did, that's right. And God made all things good. God made everything, that's right. So take the time this summer to go out and explore and thank God for his wonderful world. All right? Yeah. Well, he made he made human beings a long, long, long time ago. All right. So thank you, and you guys can go on to Sunday school over here. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, isn't it a little bit like SpongeBob being a 
Ja, hier sieht man jetzt. It's always good to spend time with the kids. You never know what's going to happen. You just roll with the punches. And, uh, and it's a good way to kind of set the theme for today. Often I've had people come up and say, I don't remember many of your sermons. I remember more of your children's moments or setting the theme. So thank you, congregation, for, uh, for the ways in which you support that ministry. Okay, so at this time, uh, I'd like for the ushers to come forward to receive your tithes and your offerings as well as your prayer cards.
you may be seated. It's good to hear the rain, isn't it? We need the rain, so let us thank God indeed for bestowing upon us the rain. I have a lot of uh, prayer concerns to share with you this morning. Chris Tatum uh, is 30, and he was diagnosed with cancer, and Chris has three children and a wife. So let us remember Chris and his family. A young woman had a baby. I believe the last name is Todd. I'm not sure of the first name. Can you help me out, whoever wrote this? Kale? Okay. Kale Todd. Uh, She had a baby. The baby was uh, three pounds, and the mother is on bed rest. Prayers for Jackson, a seven-year-old who has an ear injury and will have to have plastic surgery. Joy is asking prayers that the spot showing up on her recent uh, scan does not become a problem. Uh, She'll have another scan in August, so let us remember uh, Joy. And then uh, Marcy is asking prayers for good results for a biopsy tomorrow. Received word uh, yesterday I believe it was, that Robin's sister, Brenda, passed away. So let us uh, continue to uh, be with, think of Robin during her time of grief. Uh, Melissa Holtz, also her sister-in-law passed away. So let us continue to uphold Melissa in our prayers. Uh, Loretto is in at Shawnee Springs. Loretta had a knee replacement and is having some other issues, but uh, send her a car, please. She's at Shawnee Springs. Charles is in the hospital, and Bill is in the hospital as well. And let us continue to keep Rita's son, Tate, uh, in our prayers as he needs uh, restoration for his eyesight. It's been a busy week but we know that with God all things are possible. With that, let let us go into prayer. God, as I was driving in this morning, there was a song that came on to the radio. It's called The God of Possible, The God of Possibilities. And I heard these words being sung. I pray that a breakthrough will happen today. I pray that a breakthrough will happen today. God, we have just shared with you all these concerns, these health issues, those who are grieving, those who need direction. And Lord, we bring our concerns to you now and We need a breakthrough, God. We hear the thunder. We hear the rain. We give you thanks for that. And, Lord, if we just pause to stop and hear your voice for the direction, for the breakthrough that we need in our life. So may we turn to you this week for guidance, for support, for healing, for strength for forgiveness, for love. Touch us in ways that that we have never been touched. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, our minds to know just how great, how great and how wonderful you are. Be with us as we worship today and speak to us. For we ask this in the name and through the prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive this, our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Job, chapter 7, or chapter 12, verses 7 through 13. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know the hand of the, the, of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature, the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the tongue tests food? It is not wisdom found among the aged. Does not lo long life bring understanding? To God belong wisdom and power, counsel and understanding are his. The word of God to the people of God. As I have mentioned earlier, the sermon series for this summer is going to be entitled, It's All in a Song. So how did this come about? L last month was the National Day of Prayer. And I had asked several of our lay folk to be in charge of that service. And during that service, they had put together a capitulation of, of songs, and we would watch the video, and then we would go into prayer. And I was sitting there, and I was thinking about all these songs, and then it just hit me. Talk about those songs during the summer. And so I happened to go down, and I counted the songs, and it we have just about enough songs to cover up until uh, Labor Day. So today is our first uh, experience with this sermon series. It's all in a song. And I thought the first appropriate song would be How Great Is Our God? Because I have just come back from a wonderful uh, vacation in South Africa. Prior to my vacation, I had been distracted and overwhelmed. As you know, it hasn't been an easy year, both personally and professionally. And my vacation could not have come at a better time. I was burned out. I was burned out emotionally, and I was physically drained. I was tired. And I flat out needed a break. I needed time to just be alone and reflect. I needed time to reconnect with God. So I hopped on an airplane and went to South Africa. My husband and I spent the first week on a safari and the second week driving through the coast and valleys near Cape Town. And at the start of each new morning, God revealed his majesty, and at the end of each day, God again spoke. Psalm 113, verse 3 reads, From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So I want you to look at the slides and experience a little bit about what we experience.
And as you look at the slides, I want to share with you this quote from Max Licado. He says, from the palette of the ageless artist came inimitable, that word means not capable of imitation, splendors. From the palette of the ageless artist came inimitable splendors. Before there was a person to see it, his creation was pregnant with wonder. Mundane has found no home in his universe. Probe deep within him. Explore every corner. Search every angle. Love is all you find. Go to the beginning of every decision he has ever made, and you will find it. Go to the end of every story he has told you, and you will see it. His creation was pregnant with wonder. Mundane has found no home in his universe. Probe deep within him, explore every corner, search every angle. Are you exploring? Are you probing deep within God's being to really know him? Are you looking around and reading his story? When you woke up this morning, what did you do? Did you rush out of bed, take a quick shower, throw down a quick breakfast, and jump in the car to make it to church on time? Life is busy. We go, go, go. We push. We stay focused on fulfilling our agendas, or we stay glued to our cell phones, and we forget to explore. We forget to get intimate with our creator. Do we ever just pause? Do we ever just take a break and get away from it all and just take a drive or go on a hike and soak in God's majesty? I would often go and visit my mom. She was a shut-in. And she'd say, let's get in the car and go for a drive. Renews your spirits, gives you a, a greater appreciation for our Lord. Do we pause to take in the smells around us, the flowers, the roses, fresh manure, cut grass, the aroma after a thunderstorm? Do we ever pause to look away from our cell phones to see life all around us, the squirrels playing, the birds chirping, children laughing, farmers planting and maintaining their crops? Do we have eyes to see, ears to hear, minds to comprehend, hearts to acknowledge the goodness and greatness of our God? From the palette of the ageless artist came inimitable splendors. Before there was a person to see it, his creation was pregnant with wonder. Mundane has found no home in his universe. I want you to turn to the person sitting next to you and say, how great is our God? I returned from my vacation from South Africa with a greater appreciation of who our God is. I also learned a new word regarding that appreciation and insight. Wanishigaza. Wanishigaza. This African word means to be amazed and surprised. Wanishigaza. Say it with me. Wanishigaza. Wanishigaza. Our song this morning is How Great Is Our God. It was written by Chris Tomlin and is based on Psalm 104. During an interview, Mr. Tomlin 
said that the chorus, How Great Is Our God, came to him in an instant. But then he didn't really know where to go from there. And for a long time, that is all he could come up with, How Great Is Our God. He sat longing for more words. He prayed to God, God, this is all I have, Lord. There are no other words that I can summon in the English language to describe how great you are. How do we describe the greatness of God? I think we can identify with Chris Tomlin and the problem that he faced. But in time, he found the words borrowed from a collection of imagery found in the scriptures. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, he wraps himself in light. Darkness cannot find it. Age to age, he stands. God is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. The Bible says that God's greatness is too wonderful for man's heart. The greatness of God is beyond our knowing. It's incomprehensible. Our finite minds can't begin to explain or understand the greatness of God. But one thing we can understand is that God is our creator. From the very beginning of time, God created. In the first book of Genesis, God had a plan and a purpose. There was order and logic. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, light and darkness, the sky, atmosphere, land and plants, sun, moon, and stars. On day six, animals and humans. God made the world and everything in it. God, from the very beginning, was active and engaged in our life. He was not distant or divorced from creation. God is with us, present in all of creation. And throughout all the world, we can see his fingerprints. We can see how logical and intelligent he is. Did you know that the earth is just the right distance from the sun so that the water can exist in its liquid state? If the earth was five degrees closer, our atmosphere would be more like Venus with temperatures up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. The moon stabilizes the Earth's axis, thereby giving us the seasons and the tides, which are vital to life. God handcrafted this world and everything in it for a reason and a purpose. And that also includes you and me. A little girl asked her mother, where do people come from? The mother answered, a long time ago, God made Adam and Eve. They had children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, until the whole world was filled with people. A couple of days later, the little girl asked the father the, the same question. Daddy, where do people come from? The father gave a different answer. Well, we actually came from apes who evolved over millions of years into human beings. Confused, the little girl returned to her mother and said, Mommy, why did you tell me that God created people, but Dad said that people come from monkeys? The mother replied, Well, dear, it's very simple. I told you about my side of the family, and your father told you about his. In the book of Job, we find an interesting dialogue between God and Job. Job has been sitting in misery for many months. He has lost all his wealth and possessions. He has lost his clout and reputation in his community. He's lost his reputation with his friends. He is afflicted with sores covering his body, and he is grieving the death of 
10 of his children. So Job sits on an ash heap and he mourns. He is mocked and ridiculed by his friends. And because of all of this, Job is angry with God. God and Job have a long talk. Job at first plays the blame game, blaming and questioning God for all the stuff that has happened to him. Job rants and rants and rants, all the while God listens. But then God speaks. God speaks, educating Job about the complexities of the world and things that humans cannot understand. God goes to great lengths to lay it all out for Job. God says, I will ask you the questions now, and then you shall answer. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Who marked off its dimensions? Who marked off how big it should be? Who laid its cornerstone? Who shut the doors to keep the sea in? Who said to the sea, you may come this far, but no further? This is where your proud ways must stop. Have you ever ordered the morning to begin or shown the dawn where its place was? Have you ever gone to where the sea begins or walked in the valleys under the sea? Verse 24, where is the place from which light comes? Who waters the land where no one lives? Do you know the laws of the sky and understand their rule over the earth? Can you bring out the stars on time? Can you send lightning bolts on their way? But ask the animals, and they will teach you. Or ask the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will teach you. Or let the fish of the sea tell you. Every one of these knows that the hand of the Lord has done this. The life of every creature and the breath of all people are in God's hand. The ear tests words as the tongue tastes food. Older people are wise and long life brings understanding. But only God has wisdom and power, good advice and understanding. And in chapter 42, Job answers. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no plan of yours can be ruined. God is not only creator, but he is also sovereign. You often hear preachers talk about the sovereignty of God. What does that mean? Webster's Dictionary defines sovereignty as this, above or superior to all others, chief, greatest, supreme, supreme in power, rank, or authority. If someone is sovereign, they are the boss, they call the shots. They have ultimate authority. Our God is greater and stronger than anything. He is a mighty fortress a bulwark that never fails. What's a bulwark? It is a fortified wall or something that provides protection or support. This concept of God as a bulwark is a recurring theme of the Old Testament. Many passages refer to God as a strong tower, a fortress, a refuge. As God's children, the Psalms remind us that we are invited to run to him to find shelter. As a bulwark, the Lord defends the weak and helpless. He provides safety for those who take refuge in him. God is creator and God is sovereign. I want you to understand that God has made a huge investment in us. 
God is concerned about us, about you and me. He knows everything about you. He knows your dreams, your desires, your hopes. He knows your struggles. He knows our faults. The Bible tells us that God has wonderfully made us. In fact, he knows the very number of hairs on your head. You know that the average person has about 100,000 strands of hairs on their head? God knows every detail of your life. The God who spoke the universe into existence can speak to you. God in his intricacy and care fashioned together the trillions of cells that make up every facet of who we are. You remember several months ago I talked about laminin. Remember that, laminin? Laminin is a protein that provides support and it's what the cells attach themselves to. It's the stuff that keeps our body together and allows the cells to function properly. And you will remember that if you look at the molecular structure under a microscope, it's in the shape of a what? Cross. You remember. How great is our God? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is relational. He is present in our lives and will continue to create in and among us. So I close with these words from the shepherd boy David, taken from Psalm 8, verses 3 to 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? and that you should care for him. Did you notice that just before I read this, the rain stopped? It got quiet. Hear this once again. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and that you should care for him. If you know the chorus, sing with me. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. So our closing hymn this morning will be on the video. I changed it. Karen had a song planned, but I wanted to sing this song instead. I just want you to sit back and, and watch this song being played. It's a South African hymn that has become very popular in North America and especially within the United Methodist Church. It's called Zia Humbe. Ziahumbe, and it literally means we are marching. We are marching in the light of God. And it has also been sung in schools around the world as part of their prayers. So I want you to sit and watch and listen to Ziahumbe. We are marching in the light of God.
animals so the kids can see them. They just came in. And if you want to sit and look at them, I, I know we went through them kind of quickly. So the rain has stopped. And we can now march out into God's creation. Tell others this week how great is our God. Amen? How great is our God. Go in peace and in the knowledge that God is indeed great. He is a God of possibilities. Give him praise and honor this week. Amen.